All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing a video on how to keep your children from becoming brainwashed atheists. And if you're an atheist and you're an adult, good news for you. This is going to help unbrainwash you. So when I go through this, we're going to go through on this street legal racing bike. And by the time I'm through with this, you will be able to unbrainwash yourself from the madness of atheism. So let's get going, okay? And here I have nine ways to unbrainwash you from atheism or your friend. If you're watching this, most likely you're not an atheist because atheists are in a very small minority of people in the world so let's get going and let's just get right to this so how do you brainwash someone to where they're an atheist how are these kids you notice most of the atheists here on youtube are kids how are they getting brainwashed so let's start off with the first thing that I want to talk to you about Santa Claus that's right <laughs> do you know that most people that are atheists they were traumatized as a child when they found out there was no Santa Claus I kid you not so you ever notice when you're talking to an atheist this kind of brainwashes them. They're so traumatized that they'll, when you're talking to them about God, they'll say, well, what about Santa Claus? I bet you still believe in Santa Claus, which is a very weird thing to say when Santa Claus is a physical being that was made up by Coca-Cola and God's a spiritual being. They're not even in the same categories. So, this starts the brainwashing of atheists. I've done a whole series of videos on this. You can uh, search it on the internet. Just type in Santa Syndrome. Santa Syndrome. And you'll see a whole study that I did on this. So, one way you can stop your child from being brainwashed and growing up into an adult atheist is don't tell them about Santa Claus. Santa Claus is totally different than God. You know how Santa it says you have to be good and he's making a list and checking it twice. But God says nobody's good and that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ to uh, take the place of our punishment for us falling short of God's standard. So don't tell your kids about Santa Claus. It, the, it is a disease. <laughs> okay? Santa syndrome is a disease. Let's go on to the next one. You see this Infinity Q60 in front of me? I have no evidence whether or whether or not this person has a cell phone in their car. So the logical thing is to say maybe they have a cell phone, maybe they don't have a cell phone, right? It is illogical to say they don't have a cell phone. Why? Because absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because I don't have evidence that the cell phone's there or not there, it's not evidence then that it's not there. So this is a problem but atheists think this way. This is a problem with uh, atheism because the atheist believes that absence of evidence is evidence of absence. Like, just because I can't see the cell phone in this Infinity QX60, the atheist would say, therefore it doesn't exist until which time I see it now. Follow along with me. Is it really not existing? Let's say the person gets out and they have a cell phone. Did it really not exist? 
but the time that I finally saw the cell phone, now it exists? Really? That's crazy thinking. That's the way atheists think. The fact of the matter is, is if the person has a cell phone, the cell phone was existing before I found out about it existing. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the madness of atheism. So atheists believe until they see it, it doesn't exist, which is irrational. That's not the way to think. There are things that exist. As a matter of fact, listen to this. There's more things that exist that the atheists haven't seen than exist that the atheist have seen. That bike was a nice motorcycle. A couple of dents in it, but it's uh like look at these dogs, for example. The atheists want you to believe that those dogs are the product of a massive explosion, <laughs> the Big Bang, with no design and no creation. I mean, think about that. That cute little French bulldog shot out of the Big Bang. This is what the atheists are saying. So, let's go to the next one. Uh, why, how atheists brainwash themselves. Have you noticed that atheists will say, I need this type of evidence for God, then I'll admit God exists. Now, go along with me. If God exists, whose criteria for judgment is he going to go by? Think about it. If God exists, is he going to go by the atheist criteria? <laughs> or is he going to go by his own criteria? Well, I've seen the answer to this, and the answer is God is going to go by his own criteria. He's not going to go by what the atheists say. So it's interesting in Scripture it says that based on the criteria that God has offered, there is enough evidence. We're going to get on the freeway. It's going to get very loud very quickly. So God says all the creation is enough evidence. And do you know that Jesus Christ talks about another bit of evidence I wanted to go this way over here to the left. Jesus Christ talks about another evidence called the Pentecletus, the, the, the comforter, the helper. Do you know when Jesus left, he sent this spirit, this, uh, he calls it the comforter, the helper, uh, to convict the world. These are unbelievers that this spirit, this force that Jesus sent in is convicting the world, listen, of sin, righteousness, judgment. And then he said sin, the atheist is convicted of sin because they don't believe in him. If they would just believe in Jesus Christ, their sins would be covered. They'd be paid for by the wonderful thing that Jesus did on the cross. Then he says righteousness because Jesus claimed to be God and he goes to the Father and then judgment because it is Satan who's the prince of this world who has been judged. So one of the ways atheists brainwash themselves on this one is they incorrectly say that based on their criteria they will believe in God if their criteria is met. The problem is, it says right there, uh, go to Romans. You could read Romans, and it says that that they do believe. <laughs> they do believe, but they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And this is where we're going here. Down this way. You know how a little kid will be in the swimming pool and there's a ball 
under the pool and you push the ball under the water but the you have to suppress it because if you don't the ball pops back up and shoots out of the water this is what atheists are doing with this truth of God's Word they're suppressing it and it says because they have sin in their life because of their unrighteousness Jesus goes on to say that this is why they love the dark because they could hide their sins in the dark if they come to the light their sins will be revealed and it's interesting you know John Lennox who defeated Christopher Hitchens in debate Christopher Hitchens said well let's have a vote and see who won and everyone voted that Christopher that Christopher Hitchens lost and John Lennox won so Christopher Hitchens admitted that John Lennox won and, and John Lennox talked about how atheists are they believe in a fairy tale and this fairy tale is because they're scared of the light he said atheism is a fairy story for those afraid of the light and that is very well said so anyways atheists when you stand in front of God he's not gonna go by your criteria he's gonna go by his criteria and if he goes by his criteria you my atheist friend will be judged don't you think it's like you're going into a uh, competition a football game and you're coming up with your own rules on well if I do this I should win the game but the NFL says no we got our own rules well I'm gonna play by my own rules well great you're gonna get penalties you're gonna get fines eventually you're getting kicked off the team because you just are not following the rules so another problem that atheists have is they come up with their own criteria for evidence of God and the Bible says that they have met the criteria for evidence of God that he has met the criteria and atheists will be responsible it says they're culpable they they're guilty because they they know God exists they're suppressing it uh, and they're coming up with their own criteria so this is of course you're gonna be a brainwash atheist if you come up with your own criteria for the existence of God and then it doesn't meet it well of course because you're coming up with it it's only a fool would do that what a what an honest person would do not an atheist because we know that they lie and they worship the father of lies an honest person let's get to this freeway here would say what is God's criteria and go by God's criteria and then here is why another reason why atheists are brainwashed atheism is the view the only one I could find in the world that has no evidence atheism lacks evidence now I am embarrassed to say it uh, but I used to be an atheist in high school but I'd be more embarrassed to say I'm still an atheist <laughs> as an adult I mean give me a break most kids are atheists because their mind hasn't fully developed they haven't seen the real world yet they only see what mommy and daddy give them for dinner and they play the PlayStation and stuff uh, but atheism and this is one of the reasons why I left atheism it lacks proof and evidence there is no proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct uh oh I don't want to scare the little horsey Let's go kind of slow here so atheism lacks proof and evidence if you want to see a great atheist video look on YouTube for this video titled proof atheism is madness and you'll see the atheist experience show just a wicked show a wicked show um, failing to provide any proof and evidence that atheism is accurate 
-hmm. or correct. So one way that atheists get brainwashed, it's a very lazy thing to be an atheist. All you got to do is say, I lack belief in God, but that doesn't even give any arguments against the existence of God. When an atheist says they lack belief in God, what they're really telling you, and we love the atheist, I'm not attacking any one personally, but what the atheist is really telling you is they're so stupid that they don't have any arguments against the existence of God. So they have to talk about, they have to try to convince us that they lack a belief of God, but even that fails. In Romans it says, indeed, they do know God exists. I'm not saying they worship God, but they do know God exists, but they're suppressing him in his own, in their own uh, unrighteousness. Now here's another problem. It's a very big mistake. Another way atheists get brainwashed they are incorrectly approaching God with a bias, with a presuppositional belief. So, I'm going to give you an example. If we're going to have a debate on is the Tesla a good car, there's the Tesla. We're going to have a conversation, is the Tesla a good car? What we do is we approach it at an honest position of neutrality and we look at all the benefits of the Tesla, all the pros and all the cons of this Tesla. We don't approach it like, oh yeah, the Tesla is a good car. And we don't approach it like, oh yeah, the Tesla is a horrible car. That's what's called the presupposition. What you do you start off with a clean slate. This is, sorry about that. They're doing a U-turn to my left here. All right, here we go. A clean slate. We're gonna get on the freeway. You cannot start off like a presuppositional atheist and say, God doesn't exist. No. You have to start off with a clean slate and say, okay, here's all the reasons why I believe God doesn't exist. Here's all the reasons people are saying God does exist. And you look at both sides. But that's not what atheists do because, again, atheism is a very lazy position. All right, here we go. Got to get over to the left. Um, let's see what else. Oh, another thing too. So that's one thing, atheists. You've got to approach atheism. Oh no! You've got to approach atheism without your presuppositional belief. You, this, if you do it like that, you'll be able to unbrainwash yourself like I did and escape the madness of atheism. Remember, atheists, you're in a worldview that has no evidence at all. All right, so. I don't want to look down just yet. Let's see what the next... Oh, yes. And you ever notice another way atheists brainwash themselves? And we're going to punch it here. Here we go. Is when you're talking about God, they'll say, Well, do you believe in unicorns or Bigfoot? Now, unicorns in the encyclopedia are a... It's not spiritual. It, it talks about unicorn is a species of rhinoceros. Bigfoot isn't spiritual. He's a physical being, ape-like primate being. So, whenever you're talking about God with atheists, you notice they'll talk about teapots. They won't talk about God. They'll talk about unicorns. They won't talk about God. They will straw man. They are the kings 
of straw men, these atheists. Oh, okay, and let's talk about another one. Win six, yes. Another thing, atheists, you've got to quit saying you don't have the burden of proof. This is totally wrong. Do you know, I was just researching this, over 80% of the world believe that God exists. It doesn't matter if they're whatever God they're believing in, Allah, uh, it, it, you know, it doesn't matter. They're still not atheists. So they have, I will admit, they have a disagreement on the nature of God, but they all, they're all theists. So if 80% of the world are not atheists, they reject atheism, how can atheists say the burden of proof is not on them? You guys got a lot of work to do. You've got to convince the 80%. So if you say, no, the burden of proof's not on me, maybe this is why 80% of the world rejects atheism. So atheists, Get this in your mind right now. 80% of the world are theists. 80%. 80%. 80%. That's a lot of theists you got to convince. So, <laughs> Christianity is in the majority. Even if I didn't do anything, to uh, try to challenge atheists to think rational, even if I didn't preach the gospel, which I do. We've met the burden of proof. Christianity rules the world all around the world. Christianity is the dominant uh, religion and faith to follow. Um, so, Atheists, you've really got to quit saying you don't have a burden of proof when everything that I see shows you guys are a little sliver of the world population. Are you trying to convince people to be atheists? Because if so, you atheists kind of suck at it. All right, now, I've been on YouTube for, um, gosh, well over 15 years, what, 16, 17, it's been a long time. And no atheist has been able to answer my challenge. What proof and evidence can you provide that would finally, at last, prove that atheism is accurate and correct? And you know no atheist has been able to do it, folks. None of them have been able to do this.